<laughs> Morning, everyone. Wow, you all came with your Halloween costumes. You came as really happy, heavenly people. Wonderful. Don't take it off. It'll become our Christmas costume, Thanksgiving costume, Valentine's Day costume, a true holy day of all things costume, and Foundation Day costume. It's good to see you. You feeling good? Yeah. Oh, I like it. This side of the room has the most energy. We had fun. Last week was amazing. We had our Halloween party. We had a great social Sunday. Every week we're just trying to build and build and build and just feel more loved and loved and loved. I really feel like that's, as Brianna said, our mission is very simple. God just wants to give us all a big hug. We take things so seriously. We're so hard on ourselves. We put so much pressure when really God just wants to say, I love you. I love you. Today I want to talk about a subject called fill your cup. And I think it's a week ago, 10 days ago, it's pretty spontaneous, but I do that often with my uh, wife. I'm like, hey, Yuri, want to go to Utah? It's like, yeah, we, okay, when were you thinking? Tomorrow! One time she did that to me too. She, uh, one time she called me, it was, I, I memorize this, it was 11, oh, no, it was 10.35. She called me and she said, uh, and whenever she wants something, my wife has a very soft voice. I have the strong voice. She has the soft voice. And she's like, whenever she wants something, everything's a question. Jonathan? Yeah, that's my name. Uh, the K-pop group twice is in California. Are they? Yeah. Oh. They have a concert today? Okay. Do you want to go? Yeah. <laughs> so she let me know at 1035 by 11. 55, we were at my kid's school with our suitcase packed, and then 10 minutes later, we're on the road going to California, and she got to go to a K-pop concert. So, that kind of stuff's fun. Yeah, yeah, I love that kind of stuff. So for me, it's rejuvenating to go somewhere. When I go somewhere, when I come back, I feel new. So 10 days ago, we're like, yeah, let's go to Utah. So we got the kids in the van, and we drove up. And by the Provo area, they have the mountains, which I guess they're the same as the Rocky Mountains. I think Denver gets so much credit and Colorado gets so much credit, but I think Utah's just as beautiful, if not more. And they had a really great drive called the Alpine Loop. And so you get in your car and you start just driving up the mountains. And they have aspens. And in the fall, the aspens turn really beautiful yellow. So you can see there, like in the valley, all these yellow trees. And we're driving there and I'm like, oh, I'm so excited. Get to see these beautiful colors. Yeah, the trees were gorgeous. Beautiful yellows and then different reds and oranges. I think fall is God's masterpiece. Behind all of you, of course. And it was great. We were exploring. We played like, a, I looked at a playlist on my phone, autumn jazz. And we had like a little music playing. Kids were sticking their heads out the window. And it was awesome. It was like picture perfect. The next day we went to a fall festival called Corn Bellies. And we went with the kids. We did so many fall activities. Um, this was fun. They had to wear this. Uh, I didn't put the video there, but it was called Apple Blasters. And what you do, anyone know what Apple Blasters is? Well, you can kind of guess by the name where I'm going. But they have these, like, little gun shooting things. You put an apple in it, and then you pull it, and you go, and it shoots out the apple, and then it splats at a target. It startled the kids every single time, so that's why they're wearing the ear things. But I don't know. It, if you have any stress, shoot an apple at something. Oh, it's so rewarding. Boosh. Personally, it's my belief that if Adam and Eve thousands of years ago had an apple blaster, they wouldn't have been tempted at all for the human fall. We would have just skipped that whole thing right there. We had a great time. We did hay rides. We did a corn maze. The corn maze was hard. They did the whole corn maze to look like Peter Pan. 
and you had to solve it. About five minutes into it, we kind of gave up. It was like, it's way above my intellectual level solving that corn maze. And then even my baby had fun. This is a whole, like, pool of corn. And so my baby just loved to bury my daughter. We had an awesome time. It was great. Beautiful. I came back, and when I came back, I felt rejuvenated. I felt refreshed. So what I want to talk about today is that point. I feel like God was teaching me or sharing that point, is that we have to fill our cup. We often have, this is a very popular thing in uh, self-help and uh, mental health, is this idea of you have to love yourself. Have you heard that before? You have to love yourself. Not being so hard. You have to love yourself. And we, we give all the ways people have to love yourself. There's different things. There's holding therapies. There's affirmations. There's different things. And while I think that's important, I actually don't subscribe to the fact that we can love ourselves. I think we can accept ourselves, but I don't think we're able to actually love ourselves. And so sometimes you're feeling sad, you're feeling down, you're feeling frustrated. Anybody ever feel those emotions? Never. That's because you're a perfected being, Mr. Oberg, with perfected coffee. He roasts his own coffee. We're still figuring out a way to get him to come here and share it with everybody. Yeah, there's, there's multiple ways to feel God. The fastest way is through Mr. Oberg's coffee. So anyway, we're like, oh, we're frustrated with this. And then we're like, love yourself. And we, then we beat ourselves up more. I'm supposed to love myself, but I feel frustrated and I feel down. And what do I do? Think about we're in a desert. Can you imagine being in a desert? <laughs> Imagine, just, just please, bear, just for me, pretend we're in a desert. And you've been going in the sand for days and days, and oh, oh, your, your uh, lips are like, you touch them, they crack. You're like, water, water. And then someone comes along in their camel, do, 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 do. Maybe they're listening to music, you know, maybe do a lipa or something like that. And... All of a sudden, they go, hey, you, yeah, what are you doing? <sighs> Why don't you just feed yourself? Come on, what are you doing? And then they take a sip of water and go on their way. Feed myself? Does that make sense? If I had it, I would have done it. There is a very famous saying, you can't give what you don't have. Chinese proverb. Another cool little antidote. If you ever want something to sound epic, just put Chinese proverb after it. It makes it very wise. You can't give what you, do, what you don't have. So really for us, if many times us in our daily lives, we're running on empty. We're running low. And we're just pushing ourselves to make it through the day. What's the one thing we need to be happy? And what does that, we're going to go another level. Where, where does that help you get to? What do we need to be happy? Parents. Heavenly parents, true parents. Okay. What's that one thing? It just makes us feel warm and fuzzy inside. Oh, you got it. We need love. If we're ever feeling irritated, agitated, frustrated, angry, resentful, jealous, nervous, fear, all of these emotions, they're indicators that our love tank is running on empty. We need to get a fill up. It's time to go to the gas station. 
when in our household, if my wife or I, which it's usually I, get a little irritated, we kind of give each other a sign, like, hey, you're not feeling loved and happy, which is the number one rule of our family. Our number one rule as a family is we're a happy family, so we don't do things that violate our rule. My kids send me to time out. But they're all signals, and it's like, hey, and I'm like, whoa, where did that come from? You're right. I'm not feeling loved right now. When we don't feel loved, everything bothers us. When we don't feel loved, we stub our toe, and oh, it's the most frustrating thing in the world. When we're loved, minor inconvenience, who cares? Oh, honey, I crashed the car. Who cares? We'll get another one. But when we're not loved, honey, I'm three minutes late. You're late? I lost this. You lost it? That's warning. That's danger. That's the check engine light. Our love tank is running low. In the peace messages, our true parents have shared that we can love with true love because God, our heavenly parent, first loved us with true love. Yeah, give a round of applause for that. Think about it. When we're born as a baby, we're completely selfish. Is there any baby that comes out of the womb and then it's like, whoo, thanks, Mom. You worked hard. Wow, I'm sorry my head's that big. It's because I'm smart. No, right? A baby's like, where, where, where am I? What's going on? Me, 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 me. And then the, we spend our whole lives learning that there's other people and how to love other people. But what's the job of the baby? Is it the baby's job to love the mom? The baby's job is one thing, receive love. We have to receive first before we can give. We have to fill up our love tank so we're full. Divine Principle has an amazing concept called the Four Position Foundation. The Four Position Foundation explains give and take action. It explains how interactions work. It even explains how families are formed, people form, society, nation, how everything forms and perpetuates. It's like this infinity relationship. But what is the key point is that for people to be happy, they have to center on God and in God's love. If you're centering on Satan, selfishness, whatever you want to put on there, the result isn't a true family, true people, true tribe, true nation, true world. It's false. So the first thing we have to do is we have to center on God. What does it mean to center on God? It means God's love. When we are connected with God and God's unconditional love, then we have people with God's love, and they can love with God's love. Then they can create a family with God's love. Then we can create a community with God's love, and we can create a nation of God's love and a world with God's love. And that's what we're all here for. But we can't do it if we're empty. So everyone here, fill up your cup. We work so hard. I'm always surprised to hear people. They go day by day, working, working, working. It's like, oh, when's the last time you did something for yourself? Ooh. I have some leaders in our community. And I'm like, when was the last time you took a family vacation? What's that? What's a family vacation? How often do you go get a massage or do something like that? I just work all the time. Sometimes we have this guilt in our community. Some of you, I may be describing you, but we always feel like we have to keep giving, keep loving, loving, and we feel guilty if we receive something. Any of you like that? Someone gives you something, oh, no, 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 no. But you'll go out of your way to keep giving. You don't feel you're worthy to receive something, so you just got to keep giving. 
The problem with that is if you keep giving without filling up your cup, you're not living for the sake of others. You are dying for the sake of others. Fill up your cup. What is it that inspires you? What gets you rejuvenated? What's something exciting? Coming here, I'm like that too. I always leave here better than when I walk in. I always tell people, hey, community, we're, I know a lot of people here, you're coming in with not good thoughts and you're all different emotions. I'm just describing myself. I always feel better. You are all actually taking a step to fill up your cup by coming here. What other things do you love? Some of you are like, I love nature. I love hiking. Some of you are like, I love sports. I know one person here that loves fishing and chocolate. Some of you love getting together, going out to eat, playing board games. I don't know what it is, but what's that thing that rejuvenates you? We should do those things. If you're with your family, your work, your carp chapter, and you're feeling things are getting low, get out of there and go do something rejuvenating. Because if you're irritated, agitated, not feeling loved, you ain't doing no good for nobody. I sometimes play dolls with my little girl. Man, it's hard for me to do it, so I set a time limit. 23 and a half minutes is my record. But if I start to feel like I'm getting a little agitated, tired, something, I got to stop, do something else, recharge, then later I can come back and I can be Peppa Pig. Don't wait. That's the problem also. We wait until we're on empty. Do things that rejuvenate us. If you notice you're out of sorts, get out of what you're doing. There's nothing more important than being feeling loved and happy. You're not doing any good for your families, your community, when you're empty. Other ways you can fill up your cup. Truth. Centering on true principles. In our faith tradition, we have the tradition of hundoke, of studying truth every single day. There's amazing books out there in personal development about love and loving relationships, about goal setting, and so many things that we can do to fill up our cup that way. But the number one way to fill up your cup is find people that can love you. Do you have those people in your life? What I mean love you, love you does not mean a Korean drama. Oh, Bung Shim Kim, love you. Love doesn't mean like a big old hug all the time. That's more like feel good. Yeah, anyone can love you when you feel good. No, no, no. Love is some people that you can be vulnerable with. You can tell the truth. I am Jonathan Jesper, and I am a flawed human being, and here are all my flaws. I messed up yesterday. I'll give an example of telling the truth. Halloween was fun. Who had fun on Halloween? Jeez, fill up your cups, people. We went to a, an outdoor mall called The District, and they had all these costumes, and people go all out. One was the... Uh, recycling truck that comes and picks up all recycling. They turned their uh, baby stroller into that. Another one was a whole fairy tale, so they had a fake horse, and then the, the stroller was a whole fairy tale Cinderella thing, and it was really cool. Uh, as you guys know from our Halloween party, we were the Ghostbusters, and my wife made me the Ghostbuster sign. So if you look at our family Halloween picture, you don't even see my face. I'm just a sign. I'm just a, an object. But I can't really see out of that costume. So as we were walking, I just felt out of sorts. I, I felt like I couldn't see what's going on. Uh, people were running late. I, wanted, I felt out of control. When I'm out of control, I'm scared. That's the truth about me. I like to control everything. Because if I'm in control, I'm safe. But if I'm out of control, ooh, I get irritated and I try to control my environment, control my wife, control my kids. Ooh, I, I like that. 
And Halloween, I felt out of control. And I was out of sorts. And my wife had to give me multiple times letting me know, hey, hey, your love tank is empty. And I had to remember all the love I have in my life, the people that love me. I feel great sharing it with you. Do you, do you accept me? Yeah. That is what we need to be doing as a community. I can't tell you how powerful it is when you go up to someone and be like, I messed up. I'm flawed. This is where I'm falling short. And when someone accepts and loves you anyway, that's God's unconditional love. It's just channeling through each other, through people. We are all opportunities to be conduits of God's love. We'll have future programs. So there's a program called Real Love, meetup groups, community things. But when we come together as a community, find the people in your life that you can open up and tell the truth about how things are going. And it doesn't just mean the good stuff. Because everyone can say the good stuff. How are you doing? Good, 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 good. Then we're just trading. Yeah, they're accepting me because everything's good. It doesn't mean, I have to show this every time, it doesn't mean just go up to everybody and barf your whole life to them. Please don't do that. Our community coffee sessions are more lighthearted. Be strategic. Hey, I want to open up and share something in my life. Is there a time we could get coffee? Like that. But find those people that you can be vulnerable with, that you can be real with. And don't wait till you're empty. That's the other thing. We all wait till that gas light comes on. Anyone here, when they drive their car, you never get around to pumping the gas until that light comes on, and then you're like, all right, now I've got to go pump gas. We wait. Don't wait. What if you took the steps to keep your cup full? What would your life be like? What would your family be like? In fact, if your cup's over full, everything's just overflowing, you're going to be like, here, I have too much. If you were that guy on the camel, you'd be like, here's tons of water. I got way too much here. My camel can't walk. Too much water here. Too heavy. This is really something, I, I, it comes up, where our community works so hard. We're so dedicated to God's will. We have so many missions and ministries but there's nothing more important that we feel that we are loved and we feel God's love. So I encourage everyone here, take the steps. The fate of our community, our families, and everything depends on it. But if we can keep our cup full, then we will just be experiencing God's love and happiness all the time. Join me in prayer.